Hi everyone. Uh, I'd like to speak uh, for a bit about HTTP smoke testing. Uh, so uh, that's me. My name is Peter Heinz. Uh, I'm working with PHP over eight years, and currently I'm building the uh, e-commerce framework, uh, which will be open source, and it's built on Symfony 3. So, smoke testing. Uh, the basic idea is when you, for example, are building a new electrical device, you just plug in the electricity and look for smoke. If there's some, <laughs> if there's some fire or smoke, it is bad, and well, uh, the assertion failed. So, smoke testing is basically just a sanity check. I'd like to ask uh, how many of you are uh, writing tests? Okay, not all. <laughs> uh, how many of you are uh, disappointed with, with your test coverage? <laughs> yeah, so uh, HTTP smoke testing might be of, uh, of a bit help here. Uh, what it is? is basically checking the HTTP status code of every route in your application. It's not doing much, but if your application is uh, basically on fire, it will not uh, pass this check. Uh, it basically answers one question, is my application 200 okay? So, uh, for just this reason, uh, we have a component on GitHub, uh, shopsys slash HTTP smoke testing, and uh, you can use it very easily. So, let's take a look. Here you can see it's, uh, it's kind of documented, so you won't be, uh, uh, you won't be uh, having problems uh, requiring it. Uh, the basic thing uh, to do, I have here uh, just a standard edition demo uh, on, of Symfony. This is my default controller. I have the index action. I have one action with uh, name as a parameter and some, uh, some redirect. And I just created a a PHP unit test extending uh, the HTTP smoke test case, which is from the from the repository, and there are some some really basic customizations. Uh, this just ignores every route which starts with underscore because it's internal. Uh, this one just uh, puts my name. Uh, as a default for every parameter call, uh, called name. Uh, this just adds uh, one new scenario uh, for this specific route. And uh, this says that uh, on this specific route, I expect redirect status code. So it's not just 200 OK, it can be reconfigured. And now I just uh, run PHP on it. It skips some, uh, skips some routes and uh, checks the other ones. And it's okay. The best thing is that uh, when I just write uh, some uh, new action, <coughs> return, for example, And I'm to JSON. Really quickly. Okay, JSON me. You can see that there is one more assertion. And uh, if this fails, I will know that uh, my, my route is, uh, there is some problem with it. For example, I'll show you on this say hello action. I can just throw a new exception. And 
And well, that's a failure. There are two of them because uh, I have two scenarios configured for this route. So it's, uh, the basic idea is just make testing very, very simple and uh, make it work automatically for new routes. So you don't, uh, you don't have to work very hard. So the advantage of, uh, of this component, uh, the best thing is that it's almost without maintenance. There is very little configuration needed. It tests all the edit routes automatically. If you add a new controller, it will be tested. You can have multiple scenarios, you can configure parameters and expected status codes very easily. You can even do some authentication. Uh, it works pretty well when your application is not written perfectly and it's hard to test otherwise. And it's pretty, uh, pretty much a good addition to classical unit test suites. The disadvantages are that, they, uh, that it only checks HTTP response codes. So it's not validating much, but well, it's something. Uh, it makes really requests, so it's up to you to prevent unwanted side effects. For example, the tra uh, transactions and uh, rolling back. And uh, you might have to uh, need some demo data uh, for your application to work because uh, well, if uh, there are some default parameters, you might want to make sure that uh, the application will have those data. So try it for yourself and check it on GitHub. Yeah.